I have two disclaimers before I start. Uh, one to Peter, oops, it's not going to be in Prezi. And the, the, the second one, I'm going to tap much more into the thinking because I think that the, it's the thinking that drives technology. Being an anti-corruption uh, activist in Slovakia, in a country as corrupt as Slovakia, you often end up uh, frustrated banging against uh, this huge wall of oligarchic interests and conspiring public in institutions, so you have to be innovative. And your inspirations can come uh, really from surprising corners. As you can see on the uh, headline, mine, or one of mine, came from Al Capone, and to clarify this very odd connection, uh, I will tell you uh, a story about the rabbit, rabbit and a white crow. Uh, so my biggest uh, challenge is the corruption network. Uh, the network that stays uh, bound together very tightly by secrecy and by a common goal. And also by desire to stay in power and stay out of jail. So how do we deal with that? when this network has a privileged access to power and a privileged access to information and it's always uh, ahead of you. Uh, so my work uh, really re resembles chasing a rabbit. Unlike on this slide, uh, when we chase the rabbit, it looks more like the predator and uh, we look more like the small rabbit. Uh, so my answer would be, uh, that you really need to empower the opponents who are trying to fight corruption. And how do you do that? Uh, the biggest answer is uh, leveling the playing field, giving people information. So this is the main tactics uh, we use in our organization. And this is, where, uh, this is really where the Al Capone comes in uh, as, as, as my inspiration. Al Capone in his time was really extremely powerful. He dominated the whole, uh, the whole environment. He was highly connected to the best places and the situation seemed as hopeless as it seems sometimes to me in Slovakia. But then uh, the answer is in this warrant. You know, if you can't arrest somebody for murder, you can always try to arrest him for tax evasion. And uh, this is the biggest lesson uh, that we in Fair Play Alliance try to, uh, try to use. Because corruption, maybe you can't prove it, maybe you can't uh, see behind the closed doors, you can't get the, uh, the tape recordings, uh, to, to, to have enough evidence, but corruption always comes or mainly comes with rule breaking. And this is the main uh, uh, thing that we use. So at the fundamental core, uh, cornerstone of our work would be open data. Uh, we as a watchdog concentrate uh, much more on public service than corporations, and we try to dig in the knowledge and uh, information from the public data. Uh, so we are lucky because public service is all about written documents and uh, it leaves trails everywhere, trails of this rule breaking. Uh, this is an example of how we managed to stop one contract uh, of road maintenance that was, uh, it was a public tender called in uh, many municipalities and counties. And we started to analyze documents presented by bidders in uh, more uh, counties, and we started to compare them. And alas, surprise, surprise, we found out uh, that two companies that seemed uh, to act like independent bidders actually promised to two different counties that they will use cars with the same plate numbers to clean the roads. So this was a very simple evidence that uh, allowed us digged in from the public data that allowed us to start to criticize the tender, and then uh, the contract had to be abolished. Um, when you use the public data in the old-fashioned way, using the freedom of information access, you might end up really frustrated hours and hours later, uh, being dig dug after uh, under a, a huge pile of papers, so uh, you really need to be also smart with your energy and how to use it. So the technology is really a must. Uh, I will show you how uh, we try to save our, uh, our energy in the organization. We, for example, connected two public databases that to a watchdog organization or to a journalist would cause a lot of headache because it would give you a data in a very 
uh, very unuser-friendly format. So we uh, took the register of businesses in Slovak Republic and we took the register of public procurements and we meshed it up all together. And when you come to this app, you just type in a name and a surname and it will immediately check all the companies with, where this person is present or was present and it will immediately show you the results of public procurement. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, show you a bigger picture, but uh, you can see on this app also a very detailed breakdown of institutions uh, that are dealing with the company and with the person behind the company. You can also scan if the person was active in the company at the time of the public tender. And this app, uh, instead of using your time very inefficiently searching for data, will, will, uh, will show you these results in, uh, in a minute. And you can uh, dedicate your time not to the basic research, but to finding connections and proving them and investigating further. Um, not everything is about technology. I just said technology is a must, but what I've been observing a lot uh, in the latest time is that people were really caught up in this, uh, in this hype and not thinking about impact and results. Uh, the technology seemed to be the final goal, uh, but I think that technology is really only a tool and we need to use it smart. We need to have strong hypotheses uh, to be able to use it, and sometimes we have to find other tools and other means for inspiration or innovation. On the left side, you see a public asset declaration as our parliament offers it at the moment. The person is not very clear. Uh, on the right side, you see a person as we would like to, uh, like to see him or her and her asset declaration. How did we deal with this problem? We were trying to convince the parliament to present the new legislation for years and years, and we were very unsuccessful. So we thought, hey, you need to break down the opponent. You can't face the opponent as a mass, but you have to break him down to individuals. And we offered our own uh, solution. So we circumvented the legal framework. We approached the concrete MPs and started to ask them to voluntarily publish their asset declaration. Of course, uh, we used technology. It didn't come to, my, uh, to our mind to do it uh, in the old way, through paperwork. So it's an online tool where the politician can uh, log in, have their own password, can fill in an a, a asset declaration and uh, have it up, and work with it, present it to their voters. And uh, one of the ways uh, that the uh, American Embassy in Slovakia uh, uh, helped us with was that they uh, convinced the White House to put up a symbolic profile of President Obama, which, helped, uh, which also helped uh, the, to steer the public debate. And now, when finally the time came in Slovakia to present the new legislation, this is a functioning model uh, that is being debated when the law, uh, law is being drafted. Uh, when I said but to technology, uh, sometimes it's really the old ways uh, that, that we need to tap into for innovation and inspiration and combine them with technology. This is a photo taken in Hamburg in 1936. You see everybody uh, greeting Hitler, except of one person. Uh, I don't know if you rem remember the famous uh, Stanford uh, prisoners uh, experiment done by Philip Zimbardo, uh, who divided people to prisoners and guards, and after, um, who, who divided people into prisoners and guards, they were randomly selected people, and after six days they have to finish the example because it went out of hands. It was thanks to one woman who came out of the uh, environment and told them that this experiment is completely crazy. She was a little hero, so Zimbardo started to uh, call these people banal heroes, this person is not a banal hero. Uh, he did something very important, but uh, the third tactics that we use in our organization is to work with people, because every change in society is basically and actually ultimately about people. This is a cottage, one of our awardees uh, of an award for um, courageous people uh, head. He was a retired person, and once he started to fight uh, corruption in a uh, in, in a very small location uh, at, the, uh, at the reserve, uh, at the nature's reserve, his cottage suddenly burned down. Uh, the person was completely frustrated. His wife uh, got cancer. 
uh, we thought that this person will be lost forever uh, for fight uh, for, for a better Slovakia. Uh, then when we awarded him uh, a White Crow Award, and this is where I come to the White Crows, uh, he got in contact with other people, other courageous people, and uh, now one of them started, uh, started a financial, uh, financial collection for him, and they are repairing the cottage for him. His wife is getting better, and these people created a community uh, that actually helps each other. So uh, please, when you think about technology, use it smart, use it with strong hypothesis, but don't forget about the human factor. Just be white crows. Thank you very much.